Our worlds are colliding, to say the least, man. Welcome, folks. I am Jabby Kowei, joined by Achara Kirk. What's up? We're looking at a pitch meeting for R, R, R. This has been so, so interesting because we had an honest trailers recently for R, R, R. Jeremy Johns had his review for R, R. It's really, really cool to see, you know, the Western side because we have two channels, for those of you that don't know. Well, multiple channels, but the two main ones that we focus on is our Indian channel and our American channel. This is wild to me. This is just ins insane. I'm excited. If you you're watching this pitch meeting and you haven't seen RRR, you should definitely watch. If it's in theaters near you, I, I highly recommend to watch it that way. But it is available on streaming. Uh, oh, by the way, hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications. Vote this up, please. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. And uh, while you're subscribing and upvoting, subscribe to pitch meetings, as well as Ryan George's personal YouTube channel. Links in the description below. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. Well, actually, it's something that's in development over on the Tollywood side of things, and I figure we could, nice. you know, just grab the concept and remake it shot for Okay, so for the American viewers who have no idea what the hell he just said. There are different regions, different uh, cinema regions in India. Bollywood is a name that a lot of people who are not from India just use to describe Indian cinema. But there's like Bollywood, Tollywood, Kollywood, a whole bunch of different ones that, yeah. you know, that they use. Anyway. And I figure we could, you know, just grab the concept and remake it shot for shot, but with American actors. No. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds like a good idea. I like the idea you had. <laughs> I feel like this could kind of be a global hit just on its own. Okay. So what's it called? It's called R. R R. Oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Except for it stands for Rise, Roar, Revolt. I kind of roared. Yeah, a little. Amazing. <laughs> now, just before we get into it, I want you to know there will be a disclaimer saying that no wolves or tigers or bears or deer were injured in this thing, okay? Well, what the hell is this movie that you need to put a disclaimer like that? It's, uh, you know, it's pretty much a bromance. What? But I just want you to know when you see a man throw a leopard at another man in this bromance, that's not a real leopard. <laughs> what kind of bromance? is this? And you're gonna see some tigers get punched a couple of times, once with a big flaming lantern. That is not a real tiger, okay? You know what? This disclaimer is actually kind of the perfect intro, because now I need to know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> Fantastic, sir. So... You know, what the hell are you talking about? Right, so in 1920 India, these evil British people go into this forest tribe and they abduct a little girl because she sings good and whatnot. Oh, you're not supposed to steal people, I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah, see, that's the thing. That is not a nice thing to do. So then the tribe's guardian beam sets off on this epic quest to go get this girl back. And what's his deal? Hold on. Like, this is so trippy for me. Why? Because, like, for years we've been doing this discreetly where we have the Indian side of the American side and to see Ryan George covering this is just breaking my brain a little bit to see the world's, you know. I'm trying to remember if we recommended any Indian films. We might have. No, we, I, we recommended... We did to... Uh, Riley. Yes. To Riley for, with Linus Tech Tips. Yeah. This girl back. And what's his deal? Oh, he's super strong, sir. He outruns a tiger and then traps it and wrestles it. Jeez, that kind of feels like... You know, almost impossible. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Right? I'm, yeah, that doesn't seem possible. Anyway, so the British hear about this guy, and so they task this guy Raju and the Indian Imperial Police with tracking him down. And what's this guy's deal? Oh, well, he's super strong, sir. He takes on a crowd of like a thousand men, and he wins. All right, okay, so how are these guys able to do this stuff? Well, sir, you know physics? Yeah. Well, I don't, nor do I care to <laughs> learn. Oh, gotcha. It does sound more fun to just ignore all that stuff. It does. And so then these two guys are going to become best friends pretty much instantly. To be fair to the film, though, the way they handled that thousand man fight actually was so well done. It was really well done. Even though it's not realistic, you could see that it actually felt kind of realistic the way that they handled it. It's not like he came out unscathed. No, not at he all. He had like a scratch. He was no Mary Sue in that instance. Yeah. <laughs> he was definitely like getting He's... messed up a little bit. Only so many people can get their hands on you at once, right? Yeah. And so he was using that to his advantage as he moved around. I really liked how that was done. Yeah, no, it was really good. It does sound more fun to just ignore all that stuff. It does. And so then these two guys are going to become best friends pretty much instantly. Oh, how? By ignoring physics together. <laughs> Sick. You see, they both happen to stumble upon this little kid that needs oh. to be saved from this big <laughs> wedge explosion. So without even talking, they do the most elaborate, coordinated rest you in the world, and then they have like a 20 minute montage of friendship shenanigans. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Wow. wow. And then Beam is going to spot this British woman, Jenny, that he gets a huge crush on. Okay. And turns out she's actually part of that British family that kidnapped the little girl. Wow, what are the odds of that? I don't know, but I feel <laughs> the same way about odds and statistics as I do about physics. Oh, uh, okay, gotcha. So Raju creates an excuse for them to talk by popping the tires on her car and forcing it to stop right in front of them. Oh, destroying women's property to get their attention <laughs> is tight. Yeah, it is. That's so, well off. My first wife, actually, yeah. just absolutely <laughs> 
crushed her mailbox. Very romantic, sir. <laughs> crush that property. So then what happens? Well, right away, Beam is like, can I go to your house? Yeah, sure. Natural follow-up. Destroy their belongings and then demand home entry. So anyway, eventually <laughs> Beam figures out that this little girl is being kept in this palace place, so he barges in there with his men and unleashes a bunch of wild animals. Oh, he does. Yeah, and so people get mauled by tigers and bears and a guy gets a leopard thrown at him and another guy gets his arm stabbed by an antler. It's gonna be animal chaos. Wow, well listen, I had no idea I wanted to see all that stuff, but now it's what I want the most in the world. <laughs> well, fantastic, sir. And so eventually Raju's actually gonna Everyone arrest Everyone always talks Beam, about so that scene as well. Like, when, whenever I've talked to people who have watched this film for the first time, especially people who've never seen an Indian movie or seen a Tollywood film, they're just like, and then the animals came out and it was amazing. Oh my God. I'm like, yeah, it was. It really was. Yeah. Well, they're not friends anymore. A very big betrayal. So why is he doing what he's doing anyway? Ah, well, see, we're actually going to learn that this whole time he's been trying to infiltrate the British Empire to become a special officer and bring weapons back to his people and rise up. Ah, so they kind of want the same thing. Kind of, yeah. And so when he realizes that, he helps Beam escape, but then he gets captured. So they're like taking turns being imprisoned <laughs> just once each, and then they're pretty <laughs> sick of it. Understandable. And how did Beam find out about Raju anyway? Oh, well, one day a random woman took him in and fed him, and it turns out that was Raju's fiance. Wow, geez, what are the odds of that? <laughs> oh, hey, sir, looks like you're back on my back about odds and statistics again. <laughs> oh, my bad. Let me get off of that freaking unlikelihood loving back of yours. Thank you. <laughs> so then we're going to see Raju in prison, and the British guards say they're only feeding him one meal a week, you know, just enough to keep him alive. Oh, geez, he must be withering away. Actually, no, he's in there doing pull. <laughs> Up to you, putting in that work, right. building yeah. that muscle. Right, that's not really how muscles work, though. You need protein to make them grow. They shut up, and so then Beam comes <laughs> to rescue him, but he's got a busted leg, so it's kind of tricky. Oh, man, well, it's going to be hard for them to get out of that situation. <laughs> Actually, it's going to be super easy, barely an inconvenience. <gasps> oh, really? Yeah, see, Beam lifts him up onto his shoulders, and then they can fight like crazy together. You'd think that'd be a pretty <laughs> big tactical that. disadvantage, because now they're a bigger and slower target. No, because, see, it basically turns them into Goro from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> combat. That makes sense. So then Beam is gonna put some leaves on Raju's leg, which fixes it immediately. The super easy, barely an inconvenience moment, that was hardly worthy of being called super easy. That was really fucking <laughs> difficult. As far as, like, he made himself a bigger target, like he said in the, in yeah. the pitch meeting, and they had to shoot their way out and climb. Oh no, and my favorite bit in that whole, well, actually there were a lot of really great bits, but the uh, the double reload oh, yeah, on the dope. rifles, oh yeah. my God. Yeah, I know how leaves work, sure. And now that they're both back to 100%, it's time to go nuts on the British. Oh boy. So they just go absolutely insane and take a bunch of them out with arrows and stuff. They kick motorcycles, then they launch a motorcycle into a room that's filled with TNT and kill all the bad guys. Okay, how could they have possibly known which room to aim and coordinate? You know what, actually, I feel like you're not gonna have any answers for me, so just never mind all that. Now you're getting it. So all the bad guys die and all the good guys live and they have a big, big dance number. They're gonna dance so much and be very, very happy. That is how most movies should end, if you ask me. Although the alternate ending we shot for the bad Batman did not test well. And so that's about it. What do you think? Well, I mean, it sounds like a pretty good time, but you really think this- Wait, what? What would the alternate ending to the Batman be? A, a song and dance number, like in RRR. I feel like that tonally would have clashed so hard, but would have been amazing. Yeah. Just end every movie with a song and dance number. No, but ending the Batman, which was so brooding and serious and dark, I feel like that would have been amazing if they ended it with a dance number at the end, the Riddler comes out. This is gonna be a huge hit around the world. Okay, sir, let me just reiterate, in this movie, in the middle of a fight scene, a guy just straight up throws a leopard at another guy. That's a good point, yeah, okay, I hear it now. This is gonna do well. The funniest thing is like a lot of Indians are so confused. It's like, why that one? <laughs> like, we have so many movies. <laughs> India produces more movies than any other country in the world. And it's like, what? What? I, well, what about the other like 
652 that we put out this year, like none of them are worthy of this much attention. We get asked this so much, like why does RRR, why is that one the one that is so global? And I think it's just easy to follow. It's, yeah, it's easy to follow. And while the two- Giving it to the Brits. Yeah. And while the two lead actors are super famous in their own right, even if you're not a fan of them to begin with, you don't yeah. need to have the fandom in order to enjoy the film. Whereas I feel like- It's some, also really fun. It is really fun. Yeah. And it's like, like you said, really easy to get into. But I feel like some of the other films that Indians are like, well, why didn't this one do better internationally? I think it's because it kind of relies a bit, if not a lot, on the fandom of the actors in it. I think tonally it was also quite consistent because yeah. the, while the dance numbers were like fun and exuberant, you know, while they had more of a cheery tone, yeah. which completely clashes with the initial scene where the girl gets kidnapped, it feels consistent because it's an expression of the feeling happening in the moment and it doesn't feel like it's in a harsh contrast uh, from one scene to the next, if that makes any sense. Well, yeah, because it's following the rules of what a musical should be. Yeah. It's like the characters are expressing how they feel through song and dance because words no longer cut it. It's actually totally quite consistent. You know, it's over the top, but like it's fun. It's all fun. And yeah, I mean, and it's got a, I think it did everything that you could possibly do in a movie. Yeah. And But it did it in such a way that was, har yeah, it was harmonious. That's the easiest way to yeah. put it, it was harmonious. Plus they had leopards. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even give a shit about that. <laughs> I kept bringing that up in this pitch. I mean, I'm like, I don't even care about that. <gasps> the guy threw a leopard. No, but like the, mm -hmm. my favorite part was something he didn't bring up. And I guess there, there was just no room for it because there was no jokes that he could find on it for within himself. Uh, I'm talking about Ryan George. But my favorite scene in the movie was the dance off. Yes, you know the dance off, so good. Right, and he didn't, and he didn't bring it up, and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I guess there was no jokes there for him. I, I felt like there could have been some humor there, but the super easy, brilliant inconvenience to me, he actually mentioned in this move, in this in this pitch meeting, was the band aid. Like he patched his leg up. And oh like, yeah, God, yeah. He was good. I'm like, what the hell? You couldn't even walk ten seconds ago. But anyway, or like when he got bitten by the snake, and then he got healed really oh, all quickly. That. He yeah. was like, you're gonna be out for an hour, and then he's all like, no, I gotta go. I gotta go stop you from doing that thing and then they have that massive fight with the tigers and lions and yeah. leopards and bears or whatever yeah anyway I enjoyed this uh, pitch meeting it was this is like wild to me just to see <laughs> just to see an Indian film getting this much attention it, it like it brings joy to my heart to see yeah. like, the world's you know meshing like that anyways you guys hopefully you enjoyed this reaction and discussion I'm Jabby Kawe this is Achara Kirk peace out